Greetings from D-Lab Electronics. On the bench today, I have a Dynaco ST70 amplifier. Comes from the original owner. It needs some help. I'm going to perform an initial inspection, and I'm going to give you guys a critical tech tip if you're working on one of these units. Here we go. So we'll start topside on the Dynaco amp. Remember guys, anytime you have an amp like this, it's been stored for a long time and it shows the last thing you want to do is plug it in because you can cause further damage especially to the transformers so what happens over time is the filter caps dry out these black beauties will leak which can red plate tubes and if it's over fused can possibly damage your transformers so first thing you want to do is give them a good look over so as I stated these black beauties are notorious for leaking those will have to be changed. This main filter cap, that guy's 60 years old, it has to go. You don't want to run one of these amps with that old crusty cap installed. Taking a look at the tubes, you can see we have an oddball here, surrounded by Sylvanias, but this one caught my eye. Okay, you see that white haze? That indicates vacuum loss. So I put a red X on that guy there's no way I'm going to power this amp up with that tube installed because more than likely it's going to be shorted. Alright, let's go bottom side. Alright, bottom side inspection. You can see she looks pretty good. There's been no signs of past maintenance to this amplifier. It still has the old selenium rectum fire installed. That guy has to go and will readjust the bias for the output tubes. These are the negative bias caps and if you take a look around here on that positive side there's a lot of crustola coming out of the positive lead so these caps are shot so before I even attempt to power this amp up we're going to change the negative bias caps we're going to change the main filter cap put in some fresh output tubes bring it up on a variac and then I'll share with you a critical tech tip I pulled out all those 6CA7s. I have a used good set that I'm going to install when we get to the testing point of the amplifier. First thing I'm going to do is change out this filter cap. Now you can see that this is a four section cap and the original rating was 525 volts. If you buy a replacement, absolutely make sure that you do not go under that voltage. As a matter of fact, you should go over that voltage. I find on these amplifiers that because of line voltage changes that high voltage is over 525 volts. So I've been replacing them with this cap. This is made by the F&T company of Germany. It's rated at 550 volts, 600 volt surge. So there is your tech tip, right? So what we're gonna do is swap this guy out and bring it up on the Variac measure the high voltage and see what it is on this ST70. Here's the base of the four section filter cap that I'm going to change out. I'd recommend for ease of installation that you take a digital picture so you know where the leads and the resistors connected on the old cap. The other thing is if you take a look at these resistors they're 20 percent tolerance. There's no tolerance band and they show signs of heating. It's a good idea to change them too. So for the fun of it, let's go ahead and test them. So this first one should be 6.8K. And we got a little over 7K. And this one over here is a 22K. And looks like he's going to float up into the 24 to 25k range. So either way guys, if you're going to change a cap, spend another dollar and put in some fresh resistors. Alright, I have all the wiring disconnected from the filter cap, so this is a good time to show you guys some details here. If you look at the can mounts, these tabs come through the chassis. Dynaco simply twisted them. They never soldered these tabs to chassis. When I install the new cap, one of these tabs will be ground and soldered direct to chassis.
for a good bond. New cap is in place with the old Twisterinos. The old cap, I noticed, had a little bit of cap and crunch coming out of that lead. So this baby was ready to blow. It's a good thing we're changing it. Now comes the task of soldering in this cap. I've ground the chrome away from this area around this tab, but now we need a lot of heat to be able to solder that tab to the chassis. So what could we use for that? So I'm sure you all know what D-Lab uses for this situation. So pluck your magic solder, Snozzeramus. Sit back, relax, light up an old ghoul. A lot of people wonder where ghouls come from. Well, they come from all over. They have a lot of ghouls come from Portugal. <laughs> so we'll take a mission accomplished on one perfect ground connection on the filter cap. It's time to get the wiring hooked up. We'll change those negative bias caps, pop in some tubes, and fire it up. All right, we're almost ready for power application. I have the new filter cap installed, a good set of EL34s and 7199s. I have not changed the Black Beauties yet. Bottom side, we have our new negative bias caps installed. Everything's wired up. I'm gonna get my meter so we can monitor the bias and let's bring her up on the Variac. So we're gonna monitor the bias on both channels at the same time. I'm bringing the amp up right now on a Variac and I'm watching the current. In a minute we should see a voltage reading on the two meters. That would be the bias on the output tubes. The Dynaco states 1.56 volts at full voltage applied. Right now I'm at about 70 volts. We're going to hold steady until I see some action. So you can see there's a big difference in bias across the two channels. Obviously some adjustment will be necessary, but what I'm concerned with is does it sit there and hold bias, which it does. Okay, I'm going to bring them up to full voltage. Okay, well, I thought the camera was rolling, but it wasn't, and I didn't show you adjusting the bias up at full voltage. So anyway, what I want to do is set both of these channels at a volt. Dynaco specifies 1.5 volts. So these tubes won't be doing much at this point. I just want to bring them up to a volt, make sure they're stable, and now we're going to measure that high voltage being applied to the output tubes. My guess, it's more than 525 volts. Let's see if I'm right. All right, so now we are monitoring the high voltage right off of that main filter cap. Remember, the original cap was rated at 525 volts. The new ones are 550. Let's see what we get. Look at there. So she's just under 500. I guess I was wrong. The reason that I've been using these caps is I just repaired a set of Mark III's and their idle voltage was 535 volts. So you could probably get away with that 525, but I'd still recommend that you go with these higher voltage caps. Okay, so my intentions were to give you guys a valuable tech tip just from what I've seen in the past. But obviously, since this is not scripted video, and I don't know the answers before I present it, I have to accept the results as you see it too. That's part of being honest, and that's how I operate. My dad told me a long time ago, the most important thing in life is your reputation. If you have a bad one, they'll forget about you. If you have a good one, they'll always remember you.